in geometry, we came up with a definition of an angle. And the geometric definition of an angle was the space that was formed by the intersection of two lines, rays, planes, line segments, basically any straight objects where they intersected, measuring the gap in between the two. We're now going to come up with the trigonometric definitions for angles. First thing is we want to know what an angle does. And an angle measures turning. Measures how far something turns. For our trigonometric definition of an angle, what we want to do is we want to take a ray, and then we want to rotate that ray. So if I take this ray, I'll start here, and then if I rotate the ray, I get my angle. And we typically use Greek letters as variables for our angles. So an angle measures turning, and basically what it is, is it is a rotation of a ray, okay? Basically what I do is I start with my ray, and that's called the initial side of the angle. And wherever my ray stops, that is called the terminal side. If I rotate counterclockwise, which is the direction I have shown up here, if I go counterclockwise, it is a positive angle measurement. And if I go clockwise, this would be a neg negative angle measurement for going clockwise. Notice that angle theta and angle beta both have the same initial side and same terminal side. What's going to determine what the angle measurement is, is whether I'm rotating clockwise or rotating counterclockwise. We take our Cartesian coordinate plane. It's divided into four quarter planes, which we call quadrants. Our quadrants are labeled starting with quadrant one in the positive xy quarter. And then we go counterclockwise to two, three, and four. An angle is said to be in standard position if its initial side is on the positive x-axis. So you need to know what standard position is. Means the initial side is on the positive x-axis, and then wherever my terminal side is, that will tell me what quadrant that angle lies in. For example, if the terminal side is in lies over here, it's called quadrant two. Okay, so you need to be able to identify Identify quadrant of terminal side. If an angle's terminal side is on the x or y axis, like these green ones I've shown, they are called quadrantal angles. They are not, so this one up here is not in quadrant one, it's not in quadrant two, it is a quadrantal angle because it lies on the y axis. There, this is just basics. 
should nothing really hard here. Biggest thing to remember is counterclockwise for positive angles and clockwise for negative angles. And that an angle measures turning and it's coming from a rotation of a ray and be able to draw angles in standard position. Next thing we're going to talk about is how do we measure angles. There are two different ways, two major ways. There are multiple ways to measure angles, more than the two we're going to talk about in this class. The first way that we measure angles is in degrees. If we measure angles in degrees, a single, complete rotation is 360 degrees. So if I draw my coordinate plane, if I go all the way around, that would be 360 degrees. The second major way that we measure angles is in radians. And again, it's a single complete rotation. And if we do a single complete rotation, it's going to be two pi radians for the angle measurement. So again, if I start at the initial side, go all the way back around, end at the positive x-axis again, that would be two pi radians. So what we need to do is we need to be able to convert between degrees and radians and be able to kind of know where different degrees and radians are on the coordinate plane. The easiest thing to do, I'm going to move this 360 and the 2 pi down here. Is, let's just think of, if I go halfway around, if I go halfway around, it's half of 360, which is 180 degrees. Half of 2 pi would be 1 pi. Half of 180 would put me up here, which would be 90 degrees. Half of pi is pi halves. If I take 90 plus 180, that's going to give me this one down here, which is 270. Pi plus pi halves is 3 pi halves. And these should automatically start coming into your mind. If you see an angle that's at one of these areas, you should know those immediate conversions. Well, we can come up with the ratio um, for doing these. And That is, we're going to do our circle, x over 360 degrees is equal to y over 2 pi radians. Right here I want to point out is because radians, except in like high school geometry classes and some navigation issues, radians is the most widely used um, measurement of degrees in math and science, we typically do not write radians. So if I just give you a number without a degree symbol for a measurement of an angle, it's in radians. This ratio holds true. Okay, so let's say I want to know what a 45 degree angle is. Well, we just set up our ratio. 45 over 360 degrees is equal to y over 2 pi. Multiply both sides by 2 pi, and I get 90 pi over 360 is equal to y. 90 over 360 is 1 over 4, so I get pi fourths 
is equal to y. So here, a 45 degree angle is equal to pi 4 radians. Let's do it the other way around. This is example 1.6. If I have x over 360 degrees, and I want to know what 3 pi halves radians is. Okay? First thing I want to notice here is the pi's are going to cancel. And that's 3 halves divided by 2, which is 3 fourths. Multiply both sides by 360. Three quarters times 360. Well, a quarter of 360 is 90, times three is 270. And Two hundred and seventy degrees, and we already had that. Three pi halves is two hundred and seventy degrees. One thing I want to point out here is that pi means that this is, if I go this far, halfway around, that's three point one four approximately radians. So this would be approximately three radians. That would be like one radian. So this would be like a one radian two radians, three radians. Well, going all the way around is 6.28 radians. So this would be like six radians, five radians, and four radians. So if I give you a number without degree symbols, that means it's radians, and you should know approximately where one, two, three, four, five, and six radians line up. I did miss example 1.4, and I'm going to go back and do that right now. And example 1.4 was drawing angles in standard position. The three angles that example 1.4 have are 5 pi halves. negative 135 degrees and three radians. Okay. The way I do radians, if it's in terms of pi, I know each 90 degrees is pi halves. So this would be one pi halves, two pi halves, three pi halves, four pi halves, five pi halves. If I ask you to draw an angle in standard position, you need to draw me how far that it's actually rotating there and which direction that it's rotating. Negative 135 degrees. Start at the positive x-axis. That's negative 90, which means I have to go 45 more degrees and that would be that angle. And three radians. Remember that this is pi radians, which is about 3.14, so something slightly less than 3.14 would be our three radians. <coughs> The last thing that we need to discuss is we need to discuss coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are two angles, or two or more angles, that have the same terminal side if they're in standard position. So, coterminal. Two or more angles in standard position that 
the same terminal side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an angle and several coterminal angles to that angle. So standard position means it starts in the positive x-axis. There's an angle. Well, an angle that is coterminal to it could be one that goes all the way around once and ends at the same terminal side. Okay? I can go around twice and end up at the same terminal side. I can go clockwise and end up at the same terminal side. So two angles are coterminal. So I'm going to call them alpha and beta are coterminal if and only if alpha is equal to beta plus 360 degree in where in is an element of the integers. Okay? It can be positive or negative. Okay? So I can put a zero in here, so that means alpha equals beta, they're coterminal. I can put a positive one, so I'd add 360. I can put a negative one, subtract 360. Or if I'm doing it in radians, and again, this is where n is an element of the integers. Okay? So if I want to write three positive and three negative coterminal angles for 110 degrees, okay, well, let's put a zero in here. So add zero. Then I'm going to put a one in. It's going to give me plus 360. Put a two in. That's going to give me 720. Okay, 470, 830, same thing, I can put a negative one in, put a negative two in, they put a negative three in. And I would get negative 250, negative 610, and negative 970. So if I ask you to come up with coterminal angles, you just add multiples of 360 or you add multiples of 2 pi. Okay? So that was example one point nine, which was already in your handout. So I'm going to do the one, example 110. Again, I want three positive and three negative coterminal angles to seven pi six. Okay. And the key point here is I'm adding two pi, which is 12 sixths. So that's the way I'm going to be writing my two pi. So plus zero times two pi is going to be plus zero sixths. One times two pi is 12 pi six. Two times two pi is 24 pi six. So my positive coterminal angles are seven pi six, 19 pi six, and 31 pi 6. Similarly, going in the negative direction, I would subtract 12 pi 6. So 7 pi 6 minus 12 pi 6 is negative 5 pi 
6. Subtract another 12, and I'm going to get negative 17 pi 6. Subtract another 12, and I'm going to get negative 29 pi 6. So all we're doing there is we are just adding multiples or subtracting multiples of a whole circle. Subtracting means we're going to rotate in the other direction. Well, what if I give you two angles and I ask you whether or not they are coterminal? Well, we can use these two relationships to come up with a formula to determine whether they're coterminal or not. Notice n has to be an integer. So if I subtract beta from both sides and divide by how much a whole circle is, I have to get an integer. So they are coterminal if and only if alpha minus beta over 360 degrees or alpha minus beta over 2 pi radians is an integer. So in order for them to be coterminal, these, one of these two relationships have to hold true. Which takes us to our last example, which is 111. I need to check 220 degrees with 600 degrees and negative 500 degrees. And what I want to know is if they are coterminal. So take my two angles. I'm going to do big minus small. And all I care about is do I get an integer? So this one is going to be 380. Is that an integer? No, these two are not coterminal. Let's do this one. Negative 500 minus 220 over 360. Okay, would be negative 720 over 360, which is negative 2. So yes, 220 and negative 500 are coterminal. Now we got ask ourselves the question, how about five, uh, 600 and negative 500? Well, you can just use some reasoning that says, hey, if these two are coterminal, but these two aren't, that not means that these two cannot be coterminal. Don't even take the time to do the math on this last combination, okay? Because if these two have the same ending position, and this one didn't have the same ending position of this one, it cannot have the same ending position of that one. Just use a little bit of reasoning there. So I have covered everything in section 1.1. Your homework is on page 10, problems 1 through 5. There are extra practice problems before the homework questions, so make sure that when you're doing the homework, you are doing the homework questions and not the practice problems.